Okay, today we are going to talk about the oculomotor nerve and ciliary ganglion. Oculomotor nerve, which is also called which cranial nerve? Third. Third cranial nerve. There are two, of course, there are two oculomotor nerves. There's a pair, one on the right side, other on the left. Right? This is also third cranial nerve. Right? So we are going to talk about oculomotor nerve and basically this originates from the midbrain right and then it uh, passes through exit from the midbrain passes through subarachnoid space passes through the cavernous sinus then eventually it goes into orbit and supplies structures over there right so i will discuss every st every stage one by one in what way first of all i will discuss the oculomotor nerve through the midbrain then i will talk about oculomotor nerve after exiting from the midbrain when it is present in subarachnoid space right and then I will talk about oculomotor nerve as it is passing through cavernous sinus and then we'll talk about oculomotor nerve where it leaves the middle cranial fossa and enter into orbit through superior orbital fissure and eventually we'll talk about oculomotor nerve inside the orbit and its supply to the different intra orbital structures and intraocular muscles. Now, let us start with the midbrain first of all from where the oculomotor nerve start right and if we talk about the midbrain uh, in a simple diagram we can say that oculomotor nerve starts from upper part of the midbrain right this is the brain stem here is midbrain this is pons this is medulla of course this is spinal cord right and here is cerebellum now in the midbrain, as you know, in the back of the midbrain, there is superior colliculus and there is inferior colliculus. Uh, oculomotor nerve actually originate at the level of superior colliculus, right? At the level of superior colliculus, and it has one nucleus which gives somatomotor fibers, right? And there is one more nucleus uh, which gives parasympathetic fibers or visceromotor fibers, but. I will enlarge midbrain here, right? We'll make a diagram. It's a bigger here, and I will go into detail of the structure, right? So let's draw the midbrain as a more prominent structure, right? Uh, let's suppose that yes. Midbrain has another name. What is that name? Very good. Mesencephalon. And below the midbrain, what is this structure? Pons. Right? So this is midbrain. And in the midbrain, uh, a very important uh, structure, there is, a, I must say, there is CSF field. CSF field, you can say, Tunnel, which is called cerebral equiduct. What is it called? Cerebral equiduct. Actually, I will give a little detail about the midbrain. Then I will place the oculomotor nerve nuclei exactly where they are. But before really we place the nuclei, we should know what are the major landmark in the midbrain. So this is a cerebral equiduct. Around the cerebral equiduct, uh, there is a gray matter, and this gray matter is called periequiductal gray matter. What is it called? Periequiductal gray. gray matter, right? This is periequiductal gray matter and this gray matter which is around the midbrain, right? Actually, third term nucleus is related with it. But before I go into detail, you must be knowing there is a structure here. What is this? Substantia? Nigra. Yes. Substantia? Nigra. Nigra, right? And here is your friend, which nucleus? red nucleus there yeah? red nucleus right and of course you know there is superior colliculus over here and pretectal nuclei here i will not go into further detail and there are laminiscal system here medial laminiscus and lateral laminiscus okay i will just concentrate that we have made a section of the midbrain at what level at the superior colliculus level and here we are showing which thing cerebral equiduct and with periequiductal gray matter actually in the periequiductal gray matter uh, relatively in enterolateral area 
here is the nucleus of principal nucleus or main nucleus of oculomotor not trochlear oculomotor nerve trochlear nerve nucleus is uh, at the inferior colliculus at lower level right so this is the main nucleus of oculomotor nerve this nucleus is a collection of cell bodies right from where the axons originate and these axons eventually are going to supply the extra ocular muscles right they are going to supply most of the extra ocular muscles right and because they supply the extra ocular muscle and these are striated muscles they are under voluntary control so we call these fibers which originate from this nucleus somatomotor fibers what do we call them somatomotor fibers these fibers move from here from periequiductal gray matter this is periequiductal gray matter uh, from this nuclear actually this nucleus has many sub nuclei but we are not supposed to go into that detail these fibers move forward and they pass through the red nucleus then they pass through the medial part of substantia nigra and then they approach to the medial side of the what is this carus cerebri actually midbrain is divided into you know the structures that here is the tectum right tegmentum and carus cerebri right and half of it if i take this half this is cerebral peduncle right so midbrain made of two cerebral peduncle right and the left now these fibers from somatomotor nucleus they exit they move forward they pass through the tegmentum through the what is this midbrain no red nucleus or in the midbrain and then through the substantia nigra and then they exit from the medial side of the carus cerebri and of course this is bilateral uh, uh, this nerve is present bilaterally so it will exit on both sides right side and left side here there is uh, we call this structure a little depression and this uh, little depression is called oculomotor sulci right and this nerve emerges out through these oculomotor sulci is that right now these are cerebral peduncle this is right cerebral peduncle this is left cerebral peduncle and this area is full of csf and this is called interpeduncular this area is called interpeduncular fossa so it exit into interpeduncular fossa now there are not only somatomotor fiber as i told you these are the somatomotor fibers which will eventually go and supply most of the extra ocular muscles and these somatomotor fibers are also called general somatic efferents these are general somatic efferents right or simply call them now onward in my discussion i will not be calling them general somatic efferent i will be calling them somatomotor fibers right somatomotor fibers then with the main nucleus there is accessory parasympathetic nucleus which is also called with this main nucleus there is another nucleus which is called accessory parasympathetic nucleus of the oculomotor nerve or given a very special name adinger westfall nucleus so i will show it like that that is little bit posteriorly this is adinger westfall nucleus right and this nucleus uh, the cell bodies which are present in this nucleus they give origin to the parasympathetic neurons right parasympathetic fibers these parasympathetic fibers also go along with which nerve main they are pa these parasympathetic fibers are part of the oculomotor nerve right and they are also going along with the somatomotor fibers so we can say that third cranial nerve is a motor nerve which mainly consists of two types of fibers yes number one somatomotor fibers other are parasympathetic fibers the other name for parasympathetic fiber is visceromotor fiber so these green fibers which are originating for from adinger westfall nucleus adinger westfall adinger west fall nucleus right these fibers uh, they they are also called general 
visceral efferent these are parasympathetic fibers or we will call them simply parasympathetic fibers or we can call them visero motor fibers we can also call them visero motor fibers so what did we learn up to now that we learn there are two types of nuclei right there is somatomotor nucleus and there is a ringer that's follow parasympathetic nucleus and both of them give fibers which pass through the midbrain through these structures right and after all after uh, passing through the red nucleus and substantia nigra and uh, they exit on the medial side of crus cerebri right in the interpeduncular fossa right oculomotor nerve and the left oculomotor nerve from here they will move forward or anteriorly right now let we will make now this diagram in more simple way here right these are the, these are the fibers which are these fibers Metal. say it loudly i don't hear very good and what are these fibers Visceral. very good visceromotor fibers and here i will tell you later all the somatomotor fibers are for most of the extraocular muscles and visceromotor fibers are for intraocular muscles intraocular muscle mean muscles inside the eyeball extraocular muscle uh, here i mean muscles around uh, outside the eyeball which are concerned with the eyeball movement and also lift the upper eyelid upward okay now once these fiber come out from there right then what will happen next now this is third cranial nerve right with this fiber exiting already we have discussed it will pass through substantia nigra, nigra and it will also pass through yes. red yes. nucleus right and now it is exiting now after as soon as it exit there is a very important landmark there is a very important uh, three arteries three arteries and those three arteries have very intimate relationship with the third cranial nerve or we can say third cranial nerve has very intimate relationship with those three arteries and it is very important to understand that relationship because when those arteries undergo let's suppose abnormal dilatation or formation of aneurysm that may damage the third cranial nerve right third cranial nerve so let's talk about as soon as they exit what are special arterial structures which are in close anatomical relationship with third cranial nerve uh, okay for that purpose i will make another diagram uh, let's look at brain stem from the front okay from the side i will make not side i will make a diagram yes what is this pons and what is this medulla right and of course you know here pyramids and olive and all those structures and you must be knowing what are the structures here yes please cerebellum you are so educated very good now what are the arteries which come from here and from here yes vertebral artery right and left vertebral arteries and these right and left vertebral arteries as they are going upward what is this basilar arteries and basilar artery when they reach here at this point at the upper part of the midbrain they divide into two terminal branches yes what are these posterior cerebral because if you imagine there is cerebral hemisphere here right let's suppose if i make cerebral hemisphere here right this is going to the right cerebral hemisphere that is going to the left cerebral hemisphere so this artery should be called yes what is the name of this artery this artery posterior cerebral artery right this is posterior cerebral artery then actually on the way it also gives a branch before dividing it terminally into these two 
it gives a branch and this branch here is going at the top of the let me draw it more clearly this is cerebellum right side of the cerebellum and left uh, there's a branch from here which is coming at the top of the cerebellum what is this branch and of course there's one branch going on other side also what is this branch superior cerebellar artery what is this superior cerebellar artery now these are two very important artery posterior cerebral arteries which are the terminal branches of the basilar artery and before that it gives off superior cerebral artery on the right as well as on the left now where exactly third nerve come out third nerves come out they exit out at this point let me make uh, this uh, more clear anatomically now actually third nerve our third nerve which started here you remember and started here it will come out uh, and eventually in between below the posterior cerebral and above the superior cerebellar say loudly in the same way if from this side it will come from here out right and so what we can see in this diagram that third cranial nerve is actually exiting coming out of the midbrain below the posterior cerebral arteries and above the superior cerebellar arteries is that right and then you must be knowing later i will tell you that here is one internal what is this internal jugular artery there is another internal jugular artery you know that and they give to what is this what is this yes middle cerebral artery and interior cerebral artery middle cerebral artery and interior you don't know that okay let me explain it look here this is your one internal carotid artery this is other internal carotid artery both internal carotid arteries divide into anterior cerebral and anterior cerebral and going there middle cerebral and middle cerebral and here was your basilar artery you remember that basilar artery and basilar artery here divided into what posterior cerebral and posterior cerebral you remember that these are this basilar artery going into posterior cerebral here it will go into anterior cerebral and middle cerebral is that clear now these actually have a connection posterior cerebral artery are connected with in this system and this branch is called posterior communicating artery what is it posterior, posterior communicating. communicating artery now let's make it more clear because aneurysms of posterior communicating artery are one of the very important cause of damage to the third cranial nerve right so let's see again listen now what we have done that uh, we were talking about here was vertebral artery vertebral artery what was this basilar artery basilar artery going up up and from here it uh, gave what was this posterior cerebral and what was here superior superior cerebellar superior cerebellar is that right and here was what was happening that circle of villus internal carotid artery one internal carotid artery two right left anterior cerebral anterior cerebral middle cerebral middle cerebral and here was posterior cerebral posterior cerebral you got it am i clear and here is what is this branch posterior communicating and what is here posterior communicating actually when third nerve moves forward as it is moving anteriorly right i will make it anatomically little more 
properly placed and here what was this artery from here a branch is going posterior communicating artery and from here from here also a branch is going what is this posterior communicating now you can imagine that these posterior communicating arteries and third cranial nerve they are very much in close relationship so due to this reason problem in uh, superior posterior cerebral artery or problem of superior, superior posterior cerebral artery or superior cerebral artery or posterior communicating all of them can interfere with the third cranial nerve any question up to this is that clear to everyone okay so aneurysms in these arteries aneurysms are abnormal pathological dilatation of arteries not blood vessels because when veins are dilated they are very close okay they are not called so aneurysms are abnormal pathological irreversible dilation of arteries right due to usually due to damage in their wall now the landmark when it has come out right yes what are these two things posterior communicating so we have developed these relationship right any question up to this everyone is clear about third cranial nerve how it originated and when it came out which arteries it is an intimate lovely relationship no question now from here as it will move forward it will go to the cavernous sinus it will enter into cavernous sinus so let me draw the cavernous sinus first uh, exact location of cavernous sinus i will draw here that okay i'm making the cranial cavity right this is crista galai and you know here are cribriform plate and here are you know eyeballs right this, uh, under the floor of anterior cranial fossa what is this middle cranial fossa here is your friend sitting who is that pituitary gland actually cavernous sinus is a plexus of venous structures right and this is present on both sides of yes sala trachea and pituitary gland right so these two venous blood filled cavities are called cavernous sinuses which are a plexi form of the veins is that right now actually when our third cranial nerve move forward from here it passes through the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus it has to pass through the lateral wall of cavernous sinus so let me draw the cavernous sinus bring it out here and make it larger right i will make this cavernous sinus you can say large so this is right cavernous sinus and it has a lateral wall this is the lateral wall that is medial wall at the top this is roof this is anterior side and this is what lateral wall right now actually third cranial nerve when come out of it right just in front of that at this position exactly at this position it has yes what is this structure cavernous sinus. sinus as soon as come out it passes through interpeduncular fossa csf filled cavity subarachnoid space and there it is intimately related with yes it exit between the above it has posterior cerebral artery below it has superior cerebral artery 
and along the posterior communicating artery it moves forward right and then it enters into lateral wall of cavernous sinus right actually more truly speaking it enters at the roof and then descends into lateral wall but for your purpose we can say it enters in the upper part of the lateral wall right lateral wall of cavernous sinus now in the cavernous sinus in lateral wall when it enters what really happens this is its lateral wall here it will enter at this point right of course it's both fiber visceromotor fiber and somatomotor fibers and through the lateral wall within the lateral wall these fibers will move anteriorly right they are little bit descending these are fibers and of course with it parasympathetic fibers or visceromotor fibers are also going but very important before it exits from the wall of the cavernous sinus before it come out of the wall of the cavernous sinus it divides into yes superior duvian and inferior duvian two ramus superior duvian and inferior duvian and visceromotor fiber go along inferior, inferior duvian right so what we can say here third cranial nerve this was our third cranial nerve uh, another nerve which is passing through here is fourth cranial nerve fourth cranial nerve which is trochlear nerve and here is also what is this trigeminal ganglion from which there is ophthalmic division and there is maxillary division and here is mandibular division right actually ophthalmic division also passes through the lateral wall right and maxillary division also passes through the lateral wall so this is v what this is v2 this is v1 and this is fourth and this is third but actually uh, they enter into the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus in this sequence from up to down the entrance is third nerve fourth nerve and then fifth nerve first division fifth fifth nerve second division or we can say at the top there is oculomotor then trochlear then ophthalmic division and then maxillary division is that right all of them enter into lateral wall of cavernous sinus but as they move forward right actually fourth and ophthalmic division they start moving upward and trochlear and oculomotor st nerve start going downward right so but more important anatomically to remember is that in the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus there are which nerves third fourth fifth one and fifth two where is the sixth nerve sixth nerve oh you are telling me something which no one in the world knows yes sixth nerve is abducent nerve Six now. Where is that in relationship with the cavernous sinus? Okay, let's look look to the cavernous sinus from the back, right? If we look it from the back, I will draw the cavernous sinus like this. This is the lateral wall of cavernous sinus, right? Here I said which nerve will enter? Third. Then there was fourth. Then fifth. Of thalamic division, then fifth, maxillary division, and this is how all of them are moving not in the cavity; they are moving in the wall. They are moving in the wall. Third, fourth, which gradually upward. Fifth, as move forward, it divide into three three branches: lacrimal, the soft thalamic division, divide into lacrimal, frontal, and nasal, ciliary. And third nerve also divided into upper and lower, upper ramus or upper branch and lower ramus or lower branch. And actually, by the time it is coming out, nasociliary has gone in between the upper and lower branch. Nasociliary is a branch of of thalamic division. Nasociliary is a branch of of thalamic division. And this is your fourth. Is that right? Now, where is the sixth nerve? Third, fourth, fifth. Where is the sixth nerve? Six for sixth nerve. Sixth nerve. 
Yeah, it loves to have sex. So it should be in the room. <laughs> right, sixth nerve is inside the cavernous sinus. It is not in the wall of cavernous sinus. That moves inside the cavernous sinus, loves to be on the floor. I don't go into detail, right? Yeah, it is going to find their internal carotid artery, you know. That is also in the room. Okay. <laughs> yes. So sixth nerve is not in the wall. That is what I wanted to put in your mind. Is that clear? No question? Now, so in our diagram, we go back to our basic diagram and here now we make cavernous sinus, right? And we can say now our nerve has gone from here through the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus right and before it exit it has divided into upper and lower ramus is that right and here was your which one fourth which I have not proceeded forward here is v1 what was that thalmic and v2 maxillary but of thalmic as it move forward of thalmic as it move forward it eventually divides into three branches out of this the nasal ciliary is passing between the upper branch and lower branch of third nerve and here was your friend which motor fibers were here yes visceral motor fibers and visceral motor fibers go along lower branch is that right now there is one thing in this diagram i'm making the visceral motor fibers superiorly and what is these fibers motor fibers 